Hey everybody, uh, this is Dan Reeser. I'm a VP of Growth at Akala in Karura. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Kusama and giving you a brief introduction to kind of everything there is Kusama related. Um, if I do go relatively quickly, uh, feel free to pause the video, rewatch it, um, and ask me questions if you actually uh, want to reach out to me after watching. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm going to be cover covering quite a bit of content today, so um, just bear with me as I work through this. I'm going to try to keep everything as kind of simple and jargon-free and basic as possible as we work through um, what this awesome network is. As I mentioned, I'm working at Akala. Um, I previously was at Web3 Foundation where I worked on growth and community and spent a lot of time working on Kusama um, through the launch and kind of post-launch phase of that and then also worked on the, the launch of Polkadot. Today we're going to go over um, several things around Kusama. So what is this new development path that Gavin Wood created when he conceptualized Kusama? Um, what are the differences and similarities between Kusama and Polkadot, which we call cousin networks? What is Kusama itself? And what challenges or problems is Kusama solving um, when compared to previous kind of legacy networks that we've seen in the past? Um, what can you actually build on Kusama and what are the different types of um, platforms or applications that you can build? And then how do you actually launch on Kusama? So let's start by taking a little bit of a step back to the traditional kind of blockchain development path that we've seen in the past. So first, traditionally teams will test on a testnet um, in the Ethereum world, like a Coven testnet. Um, there's obviously no real value in that environment. So to actually predict and, and experience what you will see in the kind of the real world when you launch on mainnet is nearly impossible on testnet. But historically teams would kind of build, test on testnet and then launch on mainnet and kind of hope and pray that things didn't break and value wasn't lost. What Gavin created with um, Kusama is kind of this concept of an innovation network or what's sometimes referred to as a canary network, where instead of going from testnet to mainnet or this bank grade network that's been heavily tested and, and has lots of security backing, there's actually a new step in the middle here that Kusama is introducing um, around this, this innovation network where you can come, you can launch new applications or new parachains in a real life setting with significant, significant amounts of value at stake, but um, not the same level as, as um, amount of risk or value at stake as you would have on the kind of main network of the mother network or the kind of bank grade network that you'll have at the third step here in this diagram. And I'll explain more of this as we go through. Um, so as I've mentioned, Gavin Wood, I've mentioned his name a couple times. Gavin is the former CTO and um, co-founder of Ethereum. He actually invented the Ethereum virtual machine. He invented the Solidity programming language. And then when realizing that this stuff wasn't going to scale, um, around 2016, 2017, he um, moved on to start building Polkadot and Kusama, which we um, know today are, are live and, and thriving. Um, Gavin, in addition to, of course, um, co-founding Polkadot and Kusama, he has since also invented a new blockchain development framework called, um, called Substrate. And Substrate is what you build, um, you know, build blockchains with on top of Polkadot and Kusama. So at the highest level, what is Kusama? Kusama is a connected network of specialized blockchains. Um, built for speed and innovation. So this is a network that sometimes developers have called a developer's heaven. Um, it's a place where developers will, will love and already do love building because you can move fast, you can ship code quickly, you can try things out and experiment and have fun um, without the heavy restrictions and wait times of, of the governance that Polkadot uses to become, you know, to have bank grade security, to be super safe and reliable. I mean, that's what Polkadot's going for, and Kusama's just a little bit different in this um, innovation environment. Um, I'll, get, I'll get into more details as far as why um, certain things are on this slide say that they are, but faster is because of governance um, lead times, which is just the ability to push, push code faster. Um, proof of stake, so this is a proof of stake network, just like Polkadot, so it's run by this network of validators. Um, that are essentially validating the validity of each block and the, the accuracy of the information in those blocks. And then through that process, there's also staking 
rewards and staking um, of KSM tokens for the community of Kusama. So it's operated by KSM, which is used for transactions as well as the staking mechanism. And then the low barrier of entry here, I'll explain at the end um, how to get a, um, how to launch on Kusama. Um, all these little gray squares that you see around this diagram are actually individual custom blockchains called parachains. And in, in order to launch on the network, you have to actually win a slot in an auction. These auctions will most likely be um, significantly less of a, of a cost burden to parachain teams trying to launch their blockchain on Kusama than in relation to Polkadot. And of course, there's trade-offs to both. But why, why Kusama? Why is Kusama um, in existence and what challenges is Kusama trying to solve? And keep in mind that many of these, if not all of these things that I talk about with Kusama also apply to Polkadot and kind of the value proposition around Polkadot, but these also all um, absolutely apply to Kusama and we'll talk through those today. So first of these six categories, let's get into um, the fact that Kusama connects blockchains together. So we all know that there's several single blockchains out there today. There's Bitcoin, there's Ethereum. Some of these blockchains like, like Bitcoin um, do one thing very, very well. So in Bitcoin's case, it does the digital gold store of value very well. Um, Kusama is also seeing um, kind of a, an uprising of these new blockchains that are built with substrate and customized for specific pur purposes like DeFi, like IoT, um, like uh, security and privacy. And these are customized for one specific purpose um, to do that very well. What we've also seen um, and are still seeing is that there's also single blockchains that are attempting to do a, a massive variety of things um, just okay. They've in Ethereum's case, of course, DeFi has been this emerging, um, highly successful subset of, of the use cases on Ethereum. Um, it's having a little bit of scale, little bit of trouble scaling just due to um, the, the tech, but we're seeing, of course, solutions pop up to help solve that. But still, these single isolated blockchains are trying to do, in my opinion, um, in a lot of people's opinion in this kind of Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem is that they're just turn, trying to do way too many things at once. So we at Akala, um, and I know the Polkadot and, and Kusama team believes this as well, believe that the future is multi-chain and the future will be multi-chain built with um, specialized blockchains for specific purposes. So zooming in on one of these um, blockchains here, which we call parachains, you can see that Kusama is connecting this whole ecosystem of, of blockchains together. These blockchains, similar um, to what I said on the last slide, are, are helping to customize for specific purposes, including things like DeFi, like gaming, social media. Um, Akala's um, Kusama implementation called Karura is an example of um, one of the early blockchains that you'll see launching to solve this, um, to, to kind of fill the shoes and the, the needs of the DeFi use case within the Kusama community. Kusama also has bridges and will have bridges to existing networks as well as Polkadot. The bridge to Polkadot will most likely be one of the first bridges that we'll see in existence. And then both networks already have several teams working on bridges to um, existing legacy networks like Bitcoin to bring wrapped Bitcoin to both of these ecosystems and into the DeFi ecosystems that Karura is building on Kusama and that Akala is building on, on Polkadot. Um, we will also see bridges to Ethereum and I know there's teams building with Cosmos and several other ecosystems and we're hoping that this is all connected into one um, multi-chain ecosystem or multi-chain infrastructure so that someday the users can use the applications without even needing to know what blockchains are operating underneath those applications. Um, so substrate is another one of these kind of buzzwords or, or words that you'll hear within the Kusama ecosystem. And what substrate is, is what I mentioned that Gavin invented after he invented Solidity. So substrate is the blockchain building framework for building these custom chains on Kusama. And you can think of it kind of like um, a music equalizer for um, that a DJ might use to alter the sound. You can tweak certain things up, you can tweak certain things down and really get a customized sound for whatever you're looking for. Substrate is a similar um, kind of idea where you can um, pick and choose certain palettes or certain um, aspects of a blockchain that you would like to build into your chain for whatever use case you're hoping to um, achieve. 
This also, of course, applies to any blockchain being built for Polkadot. Um, the cool thing about Substrate is that Substrate is completely expandable and upgradable. So the amazing team at Parity um, has, they have over 100 developers coming to work every day to work on Kusama, Polkadot, um, through their work on Substrate. And they've created these initial set of um, Substrate palettes. And what's happened over time is that teams like Akala have actually come in and, and added more palettes. So over time, more and more of these um, kind of building blocks for a blockchain are being added to the substrate code. So as you can see here under Akala, we've built um, DeFi or financial products that aren't on the blockchain. They're actually built into the blockchain through substrate. So the Akala dollar stablecoin, um, liquid dot, so a staking derivative, the Akala DEX and the Akala EVM or the Akala Ethereum virtual machine is an Ethereum environment to build on Akala or on Karura. Um, Karura has similar products built into its blockchain and then even teams like Chainlink have built um, a custom palette for the Chainlink Oracle that now any team building in the Kusama or Polkadot ecosystem can essentially click, it's basically drag and drop for building their blockchain to integrate um, the Chainlink Oracles into their, into their blockchain. So next scale. So this is a, a stat that I worked on, um, I think it was about a year ago with the Web3 Foundation research team. And, and what they found in their research is that the theoretical capacity of Kusama and Polkadot both is around 167,000. Um, this compared to existing transaction processing on Visa, and of course compared to Ethereum and Bitcoin is, is pretty, um, has, a, has a pretty significant distance between the, the, the two of them. But what this is showing is that there is a lot to come in terms of the ability to scale these platforms as more and more parachains launch and more and more applications launch on top of those blockchains. The next one I want to get into is governance. So this is an underappreciated and I think under just misunderstood um, aspect of blockchain in general. So when you hear the word governance, what it really means is just how are decisions made on the future of the network, on the code and, and changes that are made to the to the underlying blockchain. There's some networks like Bitcoin that are made, created once and, and essentially never changed after that, which is no governance. The second one is, a, is an example like Ethereum where you've got a, like one person or a very small group of people that you could count on one hand that are able to decide the future of a network worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Doesn't quite make sense, especially as we start talking in the future where these networks will become more and more valuable over time. And then the third one is really what we think is the future and, and what Gavin's created with Polkadot and Kusama, which is a community run and a community voted on um, governance system where people are able to propose, um, propose things, to vote on things um, as a network, as token holders, instead of just the founder being able to, to change things as he or she chooses. So this is just meant to show the five different things that you can do as a KSM holder within the Kusama ecosystem. So you can propose um, public referendum for people to vote on. You can, um, you can vote on things, of course, if other people propose. You can vote on council members who are essentially your representatives, and you can also become a council member yourself. The other aspect of this on-chain um, governance system is the ability to manage and control an on-chain set pot or set of um, funds that is constantly replenished by the network itself. So what this is showing here is that currently as of today, it's May 5th, um, there's 335,000 KSM in the Kusama treasury, um, which is owned and governed by the network itself, which is today around $140 million. So significant amount of um, funds in the Kusama on-chain treasury, which can be used for several things to help grow the network. So one is development, code, hackathons, you know, developer-related activities. Another here in the middle is art and music and NFTs, even tattoos. Um, people were getting funded and still are getting funded for getting tattoos to join the Kusama, um, the Kusama, what's it called? The Kusama Society, sorry. Um, and then the third one is um, community growth, marketing, um, content development. There's constantly being um, treasury propos proposals proposed and approved by the Kusama Council. Next is another underappreciated aspect of blockchain development, but to make it simple, 
Um, when we say shared security or plug and play security with Kusama, what that means is as a blockchain team like us at Akala, when we were evaluating all the different places where we could build Akala, one of the reasons why we came um, to the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem is this ability to plug into the existing set of validators. When I mentioned proof of stake, there's an existing set of validators already validating Kusama. So when we plug in Karura into this parachain slot, we will not have to worry about recruiting an entire set of validators to secure our blockchain. We will basically inherit the security of the Kusama network. And same for Akala, we will inherit the Polkadot validator set's security for, for Akala without having to worry about that ourselves. And last but not least, um, forkless upgrades. So we all know that forks are a, a massive headache for any blockchain community. And what Kusama and Polkadot both allow is the ability to continuously upgrade and become essentially future-proof by being able to push upgrades to the blockchain itself without forking. So this leads to an exponential rate of innovation within both ecosystems because of the ability to constantly be improving what you're doing at the blockchain layer instead of only having the flexibility to innovate at the application layer. I've, I compared this to a Tesla. If you, if you look at this, both of these cars, both sweet cars that I, would, I wouldn't mind having, but the car on the left, um, the, the Ford, it, it's essentially the same as it is when you buy it, if not worse, every year as it gets older. With the Tesla, of course, you have to maintain it and, and worry about the exterior, but Tesla is actually, has actually created the ability to send upgrades over the air to en enable new features and new functionality of the car um, to increase the longevity and the value of the car um, as you own it over time. So let's get into the similarities and differences of Polkadot and Kusama because this is always a, a topic of conversation. So if you were to compare, I just came up with a couple examples. Um, if you were to compare the two brands, here's kind of one example. Kusama being a Red Bull, it's crazy, it's risk-taking, it's fun. Um, Kusama being, or Polkadot on the right being the classic, the tried and true um, Coca-Cola. Kusama again, Jimi Hendrix going on these mind-boggling solos because he has the freedom and the creative space to, to do so. And then Polkadot on the right, um, this well-orchestrated, um, well-practiced orchestra that's beautiful um, and that is always in sync and always, um, you know, always working at its full potential. So let's break this down. So Kusama and Polkadot, starting with the differences, um, so these three lines here are kind of three categories. So I'm gonna go over governance turnaround time and what that means to the network. Um, the fact that this is an innovation network for, for Kusama and then the low barrier of entry. So Kusama has a governance turnaround time, which means the day that something is proposed to the day that the vote ends is only seven days. This means you can push things faster. You can upgrade your chain quicker. You can push new code and new products. Um, it's great for developers, and this is one of the reasons why developers love Kusama. Polkadot is extremely conservative and safe, reliable, thoughtful. Um, so there's a 28-day process for that, which is not a bad thing. These both have trade-offs. So Polkadot being the bank-grade security, whereas Kusama is just this innovation net where you're constantly kind of pushing the limits. Second one, innovation network here. So Kusama actually gets the Polkadot code deployments before Polkadot. So after it's tested on the Rococo or the West End testnet, the code or the, the new products, new, um, new development will launch on Kusama. Um, this comes with some risk, of course, because you don't know necessarily what will happen in the live environment, which is part of the reason why Kusama was created. And then after that, when things are completely kind of refined and hardened, then it would move on to Polkadot and deploy there. And last, um, I mentioned this earlier, but low barrier to entry. So the, the cost of winning a parachain slot on Kusama is going to be lower than um, launching on Polkadot, likely because of the value that teams will place on that demand for bank grade security. But again, startups, scrappy teams, as you can see, will, will likely find a home on Kusama. And I'll get into, in a little bit, I'll walk through kind of a, a few different development paths that people can take when developing in these ecosystems. So similarities of Polkadot and Kusama, both are proof of stake networks run by a set of validators. You can stake and earn returns on DOT, and you can stake um, on Kusama as well. On-chain governance and treasury, 
both networks have on-chain governance. You understand that now. And then on-chain treasury, um, the Polkadot treasury is at around 500 million, Kusama around 140 million. Um, and these are, these are highly valuable funds for the network because it continues to help grow um, the network, the brand, the marketing, the development, and so on. And then last, the same code and the same structure. So Polkadot and Kusama share almost exactly the same code base and the same network structure. And by network structure, I mean both have this relay chain that the networks are kind of centered around. Both have parachains, both have bridges to other networks. So very, very similar in composition. So what can be built on Kusama? There's three primary things that can be built on Kusama. Um, as you can see here in this diagram, Kusama is in, is in this diagram as the base layer, what we call layer zero meta protocol, connecting several different layer one blockchains. Um, at the next level, this gray, you can see on the left, Ethereum is a, is a single layer one blockchain. So the equivalent to Ethereum are things like Karura, which is a layer one built for DeFi on Kusama, um, Parachain B, Parachain C, there will be up to um, potentially over a hundred parachains on Kusama when everything's um, live and released. And then on top, um, you can also build applications on, on Kusama. You don't actually build applications on Kusama itself because you can see there's this, there's this layer in between. So many teams will come and build DeFi applications on Karura and on Akala. Same goes for privacy chains or, or gaming chains. There will be applications, there will be liquidity or funds within those applications. And then of course users on using the applications, not necessarily knowing that they're even using Kusama at the layer zero um, base layer here. So let's talk about the, the three primary development paths that you can take as a developer or as a team in the, in the Kusama ecosystem. First is running parallel networks on both Kusama and Polkadot. So in Karura and Akala's case, we've chosen to build our DeFi hub for Kusama, which is Karura, um, on Kusama because there's significant DeFi demand within the Kusama ecosystem. And then the same goes for Polkadot. We're building Akala to serve the DeFi demand of the Polkadot ecosystem and beyond that through bridges to other networks, of course. So we will test things on the testnet here, Rococo and on West End. After we've done everything on testnet, we will move first to Kusama actually in our case, which is this place where we can um, innovate, we can move fast, we can experiment with the, the tech that we've built for the Akala ecosystem. Once Karura is live, then we will launch on Polkadot, but we will run these two networks, Akala and Karura, in parallel in perpetuity. They'll always exist together and they'll be bridged through the Kusama and Polkadot bridge. Another option is some teams might choose to build and test on testnet, then move to the innovation network or the canary network as it's sometimes referred to as um, to basically experiment to refine their technology in a real value environment before migrating to Polkadot and, and no longer existing on Kusama. So this would be a team that is really most likely optimizing for that bank grade security that Polkadot offers. Um, but still using this innovation network to, to really experiment and make sure everything is good to go before moving to Polkadot. And then the third use case, um, or the third development path here, is to launch exclusively on Kusama. So um, because of the benefits that I walked through earlier about Kusama, many teams will also find a home on Kusama and exclusively on Kusama. Um, there's already a, an, an example of this with Zeitgeist, which is building prediction markets, and they plan on, on launching exclusively on Kusama. So we're getting close to the end. This is a very busy slide, and in, in watch for a follow-up video on, on the crowd loan process. But this is essentially how a team like Akala or like Karura, in the case of Kusama, will um, earn a parachain slot and launch on the network. To keep this very short, you see up here, um, try to figure out, <laughs> uh, I can't point, but the crowd loan process at the top, um, this is actually crowdsourcing KSM from our community um, to basically bootstrap our bid in an auction. So you can see this next step, the Karura auction step. We will be bidding against other parachain teams that are, that are ultimately bidding for that same slot on the Kusama network. 
if and when Karura wins that auction, we then get to launch. So all the funds that are raised and, and bid through that auction actually get locked in the Kusama core relay chain. The team actually doesn't touch it. Then we get to move to this part where we earn the slot on Kusama and we launch. We have all of our DeFi apps live. Teams can build um, applications on top of Karura and so on. And then we will earn a slot for likely up to about a year. At the end of that slot, there will be options for us. We will be renewing the slot um, in, in one of many ways. But for people who choose to do so, the KSM can actually be returned to them at the end. So the original principle of their KSM loan will be returned to them. So it's essentially a no loss loan for anyone contributing to these, um, these crowd loans and parachain auctions. So to wrap up, here's a little um, jargon that you may hear. Um, in the Kusama ecosystem that I just wanted to touch on. So people ask often, um, what is Polkadot or Kusama's equivalent to MetaMask? This is called Polkadot.js. It's an extension that you can get for your browser. And this is what will interact with um, applications that are built on parachains on Kusama. Nominating is another way of saying staking. If you're nominating to a validator, you're basically staking with them. A parachain I've mentioned, this is a layer one blockchain built on Kusama. A parachain auction um, that we just went over, this is for parachain teams trying to win a slot on Kusama, bidding against other teams in a, in a time, um, in a basically a fixed duration auction. A crowd loan is crowdsourcing KSM for a parachain team to use as their bid in the auction. And then last, you'll hear this word canary network. Um, this is actually the story behind the Kusama um, logo because canaries were used in coal mines. They would bring a canary down and the, and the canaries are more sensitive to um, toxic gases. So if the canary was okay after bringing the canary down to the, to the coal mine, um, then the miners would know that they were okay to go in. So this innovation network that Kusama's built is, is essentially kind of a canary network because it's this canary built for, um, for polka dot. So in summary, um, here's what we learned today. Um, we learned about the new development path of testnet to innovation network or, or canary network to a mainnet or a bank grade mainnet. Um, we learned what Kusama is. So Kusama is the connected network of specialized blockchains built for speed and innovation. Um, what challenges does Kusama solve? If you remember this, the six icons on that slide, Kusama connects chains together for interoperability. It, it is able to, able to handle scale. Um, it helps teams with plug and play security without the team needing to go recruit a set of validators. Substrate helps teams build custom blockchains for specific use cases. Um, forkless upgrades allow people to upgrade constantly without needing to fork the chain. So rapid innovation, constantly improving the blockchain itself. And then last, on-chain community governance, not controlled by one small party or one person. We also learned how Kusama is similar and different than Polkadot. Both share the same code base, both have a very similar network structure, um, but Kusama moves much faster. It takes more risk, which is one of the, um, the trade-offs that you would accept by building on Kusama. And then of course it gets the latest features from the Polkadot developers, um, at, at parity, and of course, over time, there'll be more and more teams building um, at the blockchain layer, even at the infrastructure layer. Um, what can you build on Kusama? You can build parachains, you can build applications, and you can even build bridges to other networks. And then how do you launch on Kusama? You win a parachain slot auction. It's that simple. That's it. Um, thanks for the time. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter if you have any follow-up questions. Happy to help and enjoy talking about this stuff. And then I did mention Akala and Karura a couple times during the presentation. Um, feel free to go to our website um, at akala.network or apps.akala.network, which is where you can try out our, our DeFi applications. Um, and that's a wrap. So thanks, Kraken, for, for having me on to, to talk about Kusama, and I hope everyone learned something. Thank you.